Welcome back. There has been an immense amount of mental and emotional stress on all of us lately with the pandemic and the rising racial tensions and protests. Can this emotional distress actually break our heart? A study from the Cleveland Clinic says the answer is yes. And here to talk about this broken heart condition is Nine Health expert and cardiologist Dr. Pyle Coley. Good morning, Dr. Coley. Broken heart syndrome sounds like a bad breakup, but it's actually a medical condition. Uh, good morning, Natasha. Yeah, so broken heart syndrome is also known as stress cardiomyopathy, or also called Takotsubo's cardiomyopathy. And essentially what it is is a sudden, unexpected weakening of the heart muscle caused by emotional, physical, or psychological stress. And in fact, it can occur after breakups, but the most common time we see it is usually after the death of a loved one or after a natural disaster. And what is happening inside is that your brain is actually releasing a sudden surge of stress hormones, and those stress hormones are actually paralyzing the bottom half of the heart. So people can get really sick with this. They often end up in the intensive care unit. Some have permanent damage to the heart muscle. Some even end up passing away. A lot of people do recover. But it's a pretty serious condition that can happen and can have long-term implications. What does the study show about the correlation between COVID-19 and broken heart syndrome? So, you know, the study was two Cleveland Clinic hospitals, and it was 1,914 patients. And what they did is they looked at the pre-pandemic period, so before all the stresses started and the recent racial tensions, and then they compared it to the during the pandemic and kind of the, the couple of months most recently when we've had a lot of psychological stress. And what they found is that the incidence of broken heart syndrome or Takasubo's cardiomyopathy was 1.5 to 1.8%. So pretty standard for what we see in the general population before the pandemic, but it increased 4.6 fold during the pandemic period and actually increased to 7.8%. They also looked at hospital stay. So how long were these people staying in the hospital when they were sick? And before the pandemic, it was an average of three to four days. And after the pandemic, it increased to six to nine days. So it's not clear at this point if that increased length of hospital stay was because these people were actually getting sicker with their Takasubo's cardiomyopathy or broken heart syndrome, or because hospital resources were tied up with COVID-related patients. And that's why they couldn't get them out of the hospital. But regardless, it's a significant finding because they're staying in the hospital more than twice as long. Yeah, there really is such a stunning spike there. Uh, how do we reduce our risk of the syndrome? You know, so there's some risk factors that are modifiable, and the biggest thing that triggers this syndrome is stress. So one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this today is because we really need to be mindful of the stress, the physical, the psychological, the financial, and the social stresses that we're all going through, because that is something within our control, and it is something that can really wreak havoc in this way. Now, there are other risk factors for this syndrome, such as being a woman, especially being a postmenopausal woman is actually the highest risk, and certain races like being Asian or being white that actually also confer risk, but these are less modifiable. But being aware of those stresses and keeping them under check is one of the best ways to prevent broken heart syndrome. Being aware and taking care of yourself. Dr. Coley, thank you so much.